क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स गिवन आर इज इक्वल टू थ्री पॉइंट जीरो प्लस माइनस जीरो पॉइंट वन ओम आर टू इज इक्वल टू सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो प्लस माइनस जीरो पॉइंट टू ओम एंड आर पी कैलकुलेटेड एज वन बाय आर पी इज इक्वल टू वन बाय आर वन प्लस वन बाय आर टू देन आई वुड से वन बाय आर पी वुड बी इक्वल टू वन बाय थ्री प्लस वन बाय सिक्स और आर पी इज इक्वल टू टू ओम येट अगेन डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग दिस पार्ट आई वुड से डेल्टा आर पी डिवाइड बाय आर पी स्क्वायर मस्ट बी रिटर्न एज डेल्टा आर वन डिवाइड बाय आर वन स्क्वायर प्लस डेल्टा आर टू डिवाइड बाय आर टू स्क्वायर हियर डेल्टा आर पी डिवाइड बाय आर पी स्क्वायर दिस टर्म डेल्टा आर वन इज जीरो पॉइंट वन एंड आर वन स्क्वायर आर वन हैपेंस टू बी थ्री सो इट विल बी नाइन प्लस आई वुड से डेल्टा आर टू टू बी जीरो पॉइंट टू डिवाइड बाई थर्टी सिक्स इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन सिक्स सिक्स सो डेल्टा आर पी वुड नॉ बी इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन सिक्स सिक्स इन टू आर पी ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड इट टू इट फोर इट विल गिव द आंसर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स सिक्स एंड फर्दर टेकिंग ड्यू केयर ऑफ द सिग्निफिकेंट डिजिट्स वी शुड राइट इट एज After the decimal, it has to be presented in a single significant digit. So my answer here it would be R P has to be written down as two point zero plus minus zero point one ohm. Looking onto the options for question number six, I would say option two is the correct answer. Now let's proceed to question number. Seven. The measurements of diameter of a wire yields value 1.49, 1.50 centimeter, 1.52 centimeter, 1.54 and 1.48 centimeter. The percentage error in the measurements is. The method is quite simple. First, we need to calculate the average of the measurements here. Simply, I would say 1.49 plus 1.50 plus 1.52 plus 1.54. Plus 1.48 divided by 5. 7.53 divided by 5. That will be equal to 1.506. And taking due care of the significant digit, it has to be presented as 1.51. This is the average value now. Now we need to take the mean absolute error here. It will be This is the mean value of the measurements, so it would be 0.02 plus 0.01 plus 0.01 plus 0.03 plus 0.03 divided by 5. It will give us 0.1 divided by 5, or it will be 0.02. This is the mean absolute error. So the percentage error that we shall be calculating here, 0.02 divided by 1.51 into 100, that is approximately 1.3 percent. So we got 1.3 percent approximately as the percentage error. So for question number seven, our option three is the correct answer. Now let's take on to question number eight. A particle moving in a straight line has initial velocity u. Its acceleration a is given as a is equal to minus k root v, where v is the instantaneous velocity and k is a positive constant. The time after which its velocity becomes u by two. Initial velocity was u and it has to be u by two. I would write here dv by dt is minus k root v or dv by root v is equal to minus k dt integration of this part will lead us this dv divided by root v it will have the integration as 2 root v here it is from u to u by 2 must be equal to minus kt so it is the uh, square root of u by 2 minus u would be equal to Minus of k by 2t 
or square root of u here it is 1 minus 1 by root 2 1 minus 1 by root 2 would be equal to k by 2t or root u root 2 minus 1 divide by 2 must be equal to k t by 2 or t equal to root u divide by k into 2 minus root 2. This is the final answer for the time here. So looking onto the options here for the question number 8 answer option 3 is the correct answer. Now let's proceed to question number 9. Question number 9 from a tower of height h a particle is thrown vertically upward with speed u the time taken by the particle to hit the ground is three times the time taken by it to reach the maximum height the correct relation between u and h is let me give you the small explanation here let's say this was the height of the tower once the particle was thrown in upward direction the particle will move along the direction to reach the maximum height from here and then again it falls back to the ground. It was given that the time from here to here if it is t then the time from here to reach to the ground it would be 3t. Well we know by the way the symmetrical motion of the projectile from here to here if it takes t time then here to here also it will take t time and from here to here it is t time. So we need to find out the initial speed and the relation between this height of the tower here. If initial speed was u, it takes t time to become 0. So simply I would write down uh, u minus gt must be equal to 0 or t would be equal to u divided by g. And again, once from here to reach the ground, 2t time it takes to reach the ground and t time up to this much of the height. So this height is the height of the tower. So for me this height h is 1 by 2 gt square and this height is 1 by 2 g into from here to here 2t it is 4t square minus 1 by 2 gt square this is the height h. We have already calculated this part 1 by 2 g 1 by 2 it is 3 t square g by 2 is equal to h. We have calculated the value of t to be u by g. So putting the value here, it is 3 u square divided by 2 g is equal to h. Let's see the option now. For question number 9, it is 3 u square by 2 g. Option 2 is the correct answer. I guess uh, we must have got the answer for this question. Now let's take on to question number 10. In question number 10, a body is projected vertically upward, the time corresponding to height h while ascending and while descending are t1 and t2 respectively. Then maximum height reached from the point of projection is. Again, I am giving you a small explanation. Let us say the particle was projected from here and it falls back again. To a particular height here, h it has been said. This is the time t1 it takes and further it is the time t2. So what I can say from here to here this time interval is actually delta t1 if I am saying it is t2 minus t1 divided by 2. Is that clear? And the particle once it will be left from here it will fall to this distance and again to this distance. From here to here it is already t1 time. So I would say the free falling from the maximum height would have been t2 minus t1 by 2 and plus t1 or it is coming out to be t2 plus t1 by 2. That means the particle will take this much of the time from here to reach the maximum height and again the same time from maximum height to ground. So we know for free falling body this height h can be written down as 1 by 2 g and this is the time of motion here it is a square it is t2 plus t1 
होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई फोर और हाइट एच हियर इज जी टी वन प्लस टी टू होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई एट लुकिंग ऑन टू द ऑप्शन फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन इट इज ऑप्शन टू इज द करेक्ट आंसर नाउ लेट्स प्रोसीड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन